Welcome to an introduction to trigonometry and trigonometry ratios. I want to start with this right triangle and look at the ratios of the shorter leg to the longer leg for each triangle. And these triangles are kind of nested together. So if we look at this first triangle, this first right triangle, and we take the shorter side over the longer side, so the ratio would be 1 over 2. Now we're going to take the next triangle, that's been in green, and write its ratio. The shorter leg is 4, longer leg 2 plus 6 is 8. And then let's take this other larger right triangle, and the shorter leg over this longer leg here, so that would give me 12. Take a look at these ratios, and what do you notice? They're actually all equal to get to each other. And that's kind of how the formation of trig was developed, that given this angle, notice that that angle doesn't change for this right triangle, um, that these ratios will always remain the same. And we're going to look at those ratios, what we call trig ratios, and they have an actual specific name for each of them. So the word trigonometry comes from two words, trigon and metron. Uh, trigon mean um, triangle, and metron mean measure. So if you put those together, you get triangle measure, maybe triangle measurement that gives us trigonometry. Now your success with these trig ratios lies in your ability to identify specific parts of the triangles. So before we get to back to these ratios, um, we have to make sure that we can identify the right parts of the triangle. All right, if you're taking notes, and I really do hope you're taking notes here, the hypotenuse. Okay, as you know, the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So the triangles we're going to be working with in trig are always right triangles. So the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle, or across. Let me use the word across, not the word opposite, across. Because we have what we call the opposite side. Now, you have to define which angle you're talking about. Are we talking about this reference angle, or are we talking about this reference angle? So this is theta. That's a Greek symbol that we use for angle. So if we're talking about this angle, down here, let's say angle A, that's theta, the opposite side would be over here. The adjacent side is the side of the angle which is closest to that angle or helps make that angle. It's part of that angle. So this is called the adjacent. Uh, one way to remember that is adjacent means close to, maybe next to it. So it's close to that angle right there. Now if we change the angle, let's say I'm not going to use that angle anymore. I'm going to use this angle up here, angle B up there. Well that changes everything. The hypotenuse stays the same, but now this side over here becomes the opposite side, and this becomes the adjacent side. So it's going to be really important that you start out by identifying the reference angle first, and then identifying the opposite adjacent and the hypotenuse. Alright, so draw this triangle in your notes. I've put this little person here as my reference angle. So I flipped the triangle around to see um, if we're how good we're at, at labeling these things. So this is going to be our reference angle right there. So let's start by labeling the hypotenuse. Okay, well that's of course directly across from the right angle. So this is going to be my hypotenuse, and I'm going to abbreviate it HYP. The adjacent, okay, the one that's nearest, closest to it. So that means this is my adjacent side. And the opposite side would be the opposite of my angle. So this would be the opposite side. All right, I'm going to label this triangle A, B, C. And I'm going to tell you that the reference angle is going to be angle A. And then stop the video, or it's going to stop automatically here, and ask you some quiz questions. 
All right, now that you know how to identify the opposite side and the adjacent side of our triangles, you are ready for the trigonometric ratios. Okay, these ratios take the lengths of two of the sides of a right triangle. The first one that we're going to look at is pronounced sine of theta, or it's just sine of the angle. Sometimes people use a letter here, like sine of A. So the sine is equal to the opposite side, so the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now, when we write this, we don't write the whole word sine. We write the word, the word S-I-N. But do not pronounce it as sin. It is always pronounced sine. And that's how you'll see it on your calculator. So that's opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, you'll see it as C-O-S. Cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So these are just two numbers at, written as a ratio. And then we have tangent of theta, or of the angle. You'll see that written as T-A-N, tan, for tangent, but pronounce it as tangent, not as tan. It is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So we're going to get some practice with writing these ratios. All right, here is a right triangle, triangle ABC. Two of the sides are labeled 3 Four. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and fill in that hypotenuse. With the Pythagorean theorem, you could easily figure out the hypotenuse. Or maybe you remember that a 3, 4, 5 triangle is a right triangle. All right, we're going to write the ratio for sine of A. So that means A is my reference angle. So with A being my reference angle, I'm going to put everything in blue. So A is my reference angle. So let's go ahead and, and write this. If there's my hypotenuse, this is going to be my opposite side, and this is my adjacent side. And I highly recommend that you label the triangles, then you'll get your ratios correct. All right, sine is opposite, I'm going to use an O, over the hypotenuse. So sine of A equals 3 over 5. Cosine, okay, so of A, angle A. Remember, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is 4, the hypotenuse is 5. Tangent of A, okay, that is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side is 3, the adjacent side is 4. Let's change the reference angle here. So I'm going to change colors. I'm going to change to red. So now let's make angle B, our reference angle here. Well, that's going to change some things. I'm going to see if I can erase what I wrote earlier. Okay, here we go. So angle B, this is still my hypotenuse, but now this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. So sine of B, sine opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 4 over 5. Cosine opposite over hypotenuse. Sorry, did I say that? Adjacent, excuse me, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 3 over 5. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So now we get 4 over 3. And you have written the trig ratios. All right, let's look at another triangle here. Um, two of the angles are labeled 30 degrees and 60 degrees, and all three sides are labeled as well as far as their lengths go. So we want to write the sine of 30. So for sine of 30, you're going to use the angle 30 as your reference. And for sine, it is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side of 30 is over here at 1. The hypotenuse is 2. So the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Let's look at the tangent of 60. So my reference angle changes. Now I'm down here at 60 degrees. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side of 60 is the square root of 3 over the adjacent side, which is 1. All right, we have one more cosine of 30 degrees. I'm going to have the video stop here and give you a quick quiz question and see how you do on finding cosine of 30. 
All right, cosine of 30 is adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is going to give us the square root of 3 over 2. All right, so how are you going to remember sine, cosine, tangent? If you've been around any upperclassmen or you've any older brothers and sisters, you may have heard the saying Sokotoa. So here's Sokotoa. It stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Ka, cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. Toa, tangent, opposite over adjacent. So I might encourage you to write down Sokotoa on your paper each day as you are practicing. That way you can refer back to, if you're looking for sine, you can do a quick check to say, yep, that is opposite over hypotenuse. All right, those are the three main trig ratios, but there are three more that as honor students you need to be familiar with. It's going to be an entire year from now before you will see trig again in geometry. And between now and then, many of you will take the ACT for the first time, maybe even the second time this spring or next fall. And you're definitely going to see these trig ratios on the ACT. So I want to introduce you to the next three. And these are the, what I call the reciprocal ratios. We're simply going to take one over cosine. That is called secant. Now, depending on if you're uh, from the north, we pronounce it secant. If you're from the south, people say secant. Um, according to the internet, both are correct. So we abbreviate that as SEC. And so we're taking the reciprocal. So what you knew is cosine being adjacent over hypotenuse. We just flip that. And now the hypotenuse is in the numerator and the adjacent side is in the denominator. One over sine is cosecant. It is abbreviated CSC. That's hypotenuse over opposite. And one over tangent is called cotangent, abbreviated COT. And in that case, the adjacent side would be over the opposite side.